six months or so ago, I finally got my hands on a NAS. This one actually, a Ugreen NASSYNC DXP4800 Plus. But has the reality of owning a NAS lived up to the dream? And how has having a NAS affected my workflow? I'm David, and this is D Talking Tech. When I added this Ugreen DXP4800 Plus to my studio, I wasn't sure if it would pan out the way I wanted it to or not. I wanted to break free from cloud storage solutions and have more control over my files. I was also hoping to have a quicker and more seamless backup and redundancy workflow too. As you can imagine, I create a lot of data each week. Making my content is one thing, but backing it up, archiving it, and having it available everywhere all of the time is also critical to me. Well, virtually the moment I set up my NAS and started using it, it quickly became part of my daily workflow. You know the feeling, you get some bits of kit that you simply can't do without. Well, the DXP 4800 Plus is now one of those bits of kit. In short, I'm delighted with it, and now I can't imagine working without it. Of course, with a NAS, there's an upfront cost. Mine, as you see it here, costs just under £600 or $700, but don't forget, that's a one-off cost. You'll need the drives to go with it, which is another one-off cost, and I'll talk more about those later on. But my point is that once it's set up and configured, there are no more costs and no monthly subs. Now it just sits quietly under my desk, out of sight, doing its job, and that's the kind of kit that I love. And to that point, even with the Western Digital Red Plus hard drives I've got in it at the moment, I was concerned that it may suddenly start spinning up when I was recording or something, but I've had no issues at all. Not only am I now in control of my days, but pretty soon it'll start to save me money too. For example, when my Dropbox annual sub comes around for renewal, for the first time ever, I should be able to reduce the amount of storage I need and bring down my sub. And the thing is, cloud storage subs kind of, they, they creep up on you. Have you stopped and counted how many you've got? I bet it's more than you think at first. And you're paying for those month after month, year after year. And as your storage needs grow, You'll soon find yourself getting warnings that you're running out of space, and with cloud solutions, buying more storage can cost a fortune. It's easy to lose track, and it soon starts to add up. With a NAS, though, limits aren't an issue. My Ugreen NAS Sync DXP4800 Plus has up to 112 terabytes, 112 terabytes of storage available. To put some context on that number, it's equivalent to about 39 million three meg pictures. In other words, it's a heck of a lot of storage. Now, I said a moment ago that cloud storage can soon rack up. Well, let's go through what I'm currently spending. I have three main cloud storage systems that I use, the main one being Dropbox. I've had an account with them, I think, for over 10 years now. I also pay for iCloud and for Adobe too. I pay £140 a year for the Dropbox Essential Plan, which gives me only three terabytes of storage. My two terabyte iCloud plan costs £9 a month, and then there's Adobe. Very roughly speaking, that means I'm spending around about £300 a year on various cloud storage, which is absolutely obscene. By my reckoning, I should have made my money back on buying a NAS in the first year to 18 months. Going back to the Adobe one for just a moment though, that one can easily catch you out. I pay around £50 a month for my Adobe Creative Cloud account. You only get 100 gig of storage, but as a photographer, that's filling up pretty quickly because of all the raw images I upload. If I need to buy more storage from Adobe, it's gonna cost me roughly 10 pound per month per terabyte. Well, that's not gonna happen. I'm not handing over any more money to Adobe. So I've gone through deleting a load of old images I don't need from Lightroom. And from now on, I'm putting all my raw images on my NAS first. Then I'll look through what I have and only take the ones I want to edit into Lightroom. But now I'll be able to keep all of my original shots as it's not costing me in cloud storage. Also. When I get some free time, I'm going to download my saved images from Lightroom to my NAS, so that way I'll only have the most recent images and edits in Lightroom. Everything else will be on my DXP4800+. Plus. And by the way, if you use Lightroom, I also share my photography and all of my edits and settings to the Lightroom community. Look for me on there, you'll find me by looking for D Talking Tech. Although I'll admit I've not had any security issues over the years with cloud storage, by using my Ugreen NAS, it means I'm totally in control of my data and my security. Terms and conditions keep changing, say with Adobe and CapCut too, for example, as to what they're allowed to do with your images. I don't want to hand over the IP of my work to a third party, and by keeping everything on my NAS, I'm in control. No one but me has access to them. Now, at the moment, I work alone, so at the moment, I have 100% data ownership, along with advanced NAS encryption to protect my files. In time, though, should I hire an editor, for example, there are flexible permission management tools which would make it easy to share projects while still protecting my privacy on all my other work and projects. I'm sure you know what it's like. We all change our workflows over time and find better and quicker ways to work. 
once I started using my NAS, it didn't take me long to realize that I could utilize it better and improve my workflow. To start editing my videos, for example, I need three files. I need the file from the Canon, the ProRes log footage from my iPhone, and the audio track. What I do now is as soon as I'm done recording, I pop the SD card and my Samsung SSD directly into the NAS. And after I EQ the audio track, which is only a small file anyway, then I'll drag that to the desktop personal NAS folder that I've created. Now, I always put all those three files on my NAS first. And even that massive 140 gig log file for my iPhone only takes about seven or eight minutes to upload. It's a no brainer. And boy, last week, was I ever pleased that my files were safe on my NAS. I had to, I had one of those moments. Normally, I put those files on a Thunderbolt 5 SSD and take that home to start editing the following morning. Well, last week, that SSD failed on me. But because I already had the files on my NAS, I could download them at home and carry on working without missing a beat. Honestly, I had no downtime at all, all because those three files were safe on my NAS. And that's something else I've noticed over the first few months of using my Ugreen NAS, is that because of the powerful 12th gen 5-core Intel processor, it's much quicker to both transfer and download files to my NAS than it is to any cloud service that I've tried. I found that I can download a one terabyte file in around about 20 minutes. My NAS is hooked up to my M4 Pro Mac Mini via the 10 gig ethernet port that I spec'd when I was buying the Mac Mini, which helps me get close to the quoted 1250 megs per second download speeds. File transfers have been solid and surprisingly quick too. And if you have a full five gigabit ethernet connection, your speeds will be even better than mine. Even with the HDs that I've got in my DXP 4800 plus at the moment, it's quick enough to start to edit from the NAS directly should I want to. But the more I start to use and rely on my NAS, it's made me think about upgrading the HDs to SSDs it would just make it even quicker. And if I wanted to go that route, the good news is Ugreen has a compatibility list on their website, which is regularly updated, listing all the SSDs, HDs, M.2s, and SD cards that are compatible with their NAS systems. It's worth checking out. It's safe to say that this NAS has way exceeded my expectations. I'm starting to rely on it so much now. Initially, my main aim was just to archive all of my video work on the NAS so that it was offloaded from my Thunderbolt 5 drives that I work from, but of course, the more I have stored on my NAS, it means that I need to find ways to back it up. This NAS has its own app store, and when I was checking through some of the apps available on there, I found the Sync and Backup app and the Cloud Drive app. The Cloud Drive app allows you to back up to Google Drive if you have one, which means that you then have a genuine off-site cloud backup. My NAS is set up for single disk redundancy, but I want to make sure that should the worst happen, say this studio burns down or something, then at least all my files are safe and securely stored somewhere. There's a workaround that I'm looking into, and that's backing up to another NAS that I could have off-site. Then I could use the Sync and Backup app, and that's something I'll be looking into later this year. Ideally, I'll be looking to have a NAS at home and a NAS here in the studio, which will always be in sync with one another, and of course, sub-free and totally, totally secure. With photography becoming a bigger part of what I do, the Photos app is one that I've been leaning into more and more. Using the Photo app is going to be a massive advantage to me. And yes, if you're wondering, it supports all kinds of file formats, including RAW, RAF, CR2, and the CR3 files that I get from my Canon. As I mentioned earlier, now when I'm out on a shoot, the first thing I do is dump all of those files onto my NAS. I can even upload them remotely from a hotel or from home. Again, meaning I'm not purely relying on that SD card. That SSD failure last week has made me become even more cautious about redundancy. And once they're uploaded, I can reach my files from anywhere on a Mac or using the Ugreen app for my iPhone and iPad. I can even preview them too. That's what I'm meaning. The more I use it, the more I'm getting out of using this NAS. Inside that Photos app, you can download modules to recognize people, text, duplicates, and even objects and products. If you have an album with a number of people in it, it'll scan it and pull out the different faces or places for you to name. It even works with pets. And being intelligent, it means every time you upload another image of that person or pet or product, Ugreen's AI engines will notice it and add it to their album. This DXP4800 Plus also works with the ProRes video files that I shoot with my iPhone 16 Pro Max. I can't preview the file at the moment, but as mentioned, I can import it from the NAS to Final Cut and edit with no problems at all. And that will be even better when I upgrade to those SSDs. The photo and video side of this NAS has been an unexpected surprise. I keep finding other uses for the DXP4800 Plus too. For instance, I have a pretty large vinyl collection. Whenever I buy an album, I rip it so that I also have a digital file and copy of it. That means 
not only do I have that copy, but if I want to listen to the album at the studio where I haven't got a turntable, I can. In the past, those albums have been stored on Dropbox, but that takes up a pretty tidy amount of space. So over the past few weeks, I've been downloading them from Dropbox and saving them to my NAS. If I'm in the studio, they're available to play locally. But of course, as with the photos, because this is a NAS, I can listen to them anywhere. I can reach those albums at any time and for free. The interface is super user-friendly, it's quiet, the software updates are seamless, and the App Store opens up a ton of possibilities so that you can tailor this NAS to your exact needs. It's just so much more flexible than cloud storage solutions could ever be, and private, and yes, free. Setting up a few months ago was simple, way more simple than I thought it was going to be. All you need to do is follow the step-by-step on-screen guide to set it up and to start using it. For memory, it took me under 45 minutes, I think. Installing or swapping over the hard drives is as simple as unlocking and opening the drive trays. You don't need any additional special tools. This NASSYNC DXP4800 Plus also comes with a two-year manufacturer's warranty from Ugreen as well for total peace of mind. Being a NAS newbie, I chose the DXP4800 Plus because it's the most beginner-friendly NAS out there. I started by only scratching the surface of this NAS, but now the more I use it, the more uses I'm finding for it. And I bet if you try out the DXP4800 Plus NAS Sync from Ugreen for yourself, you'll start to see the benefits of it just like I have. Getting a NAS is one of those things we all think we'll do one day. Well, I just wish I'd done it sooner. A few moments ago, I briefly mentioned my video editing workflow and the video on screen now explains exactly how I go about that. 